what you're going to need for this project is a tin can, outdoor paint and paintbrush, bamboo or twigs and other natural materials, string, and a nail and hammer. The first thing you're going to want to do is to decide where the bottom of your can is going to be and then you're going to use your hammer and nail to punch a couple of holes in it. This will provide good drainage so that if any rain does get into your can, it can all go out the bottom without harming any of the insects living inside. The next step, once you have your painted can ready for the outdoors, remember you want to leave the, leave the holes, the next step is to fill it with your natural materials. This is a very generalized insect home, so we're not going to be too picky about what sort of natural materials we add. We just want to make sure that they're going to provide good shelter and a breeding site for other bugs. So you're just going to want to take all your materials, you can break them a little bit, and kind of pile them in your can. These are old hydrangea stalks. A lot of uh, bees will enjoy making their homes in hollowed out dead stalks of plants. So leaving old irises, old flower stalks, old coneflower stalks is a really good idea for native bee species. You might want to include some pine cones as well. Again, this is a very generalized insect hotel. If you wanted to get more specific and do a ladybug hotel or a mason bee, carpenter bee, solitary bee hotels you are going to want to be very more specific with the type of materials that you use toilet paper tubes I also use corks from old wine bottles and if you're gonna do that you want to make sure that the cork is actually cork it's not foam it's not uh, plastic, you want that real cork material. And then you just keep filling it up. You want it to be nice and tight in there so that things don't fall out really easily. But you also want to make sure that things are going to have space to move around. If you need to make sure that things fit tight, you can always take stuff out to make room for bigger things and then put stuff back in as needed. I have a whole jar here filled with things that I've saved throughout the years as last fall I was able to harvest some of the dead stalks and have been able to save up some wine corks and other pine cones specifically for this. Eventually you should have something that looks like this or similar filled with these um, dried stalks filled with holes, spaces for bees and other insects to climb inside. For a generalized insect hotel, you don't need to be too picky about the sort of place that you put your house in. However, you are going to want to make sure that there is good shade and some good protection nearby. So I'm going to go into my garden here and take a look at what might be the best spot for my new insect hotel to go. 
So for mine, again being generalized, it can go pretty much anywhere. I don't want it to be baking in the sun and I do want to provide it with some shade. So I also want to make sure that if it's here in my garden that I am going to be putting it in a spot where it will have good access to food and other little insects that they might want to hunt or next to some flowers. Okay, so I've decided where I want my insect hotel to go. This is a sunny spot. If I put it just here on the ground, it would 100% bake in the sun and I don't wanna bake any of the bugs inside it. So I'm gonna put it back here behind some of this vegetation. Some insects are going to try to crawl in here, so I wanna make sure that it's not gonna blow away. I also want to make sure that the way in front of the insect hotel is moderately clear and uncovered so that insects are going to have a pretty easy time to get in. Putting this in the garden also is going to encourage some beneficial insects to come and help you out as they pollinate and make your garden nice and good. I am also going to put a rock on either side of it just to help secure it so that it doesn't roll around and blow away. That would be very sad if their house disappeared. So now I see that it's in some shade cover. I know that there are some good plants nearby for them to use as food sources and I know that they will be happy. Some good things to remember for your insect hotel is if you want to be specific in terms of what insect you're trying to attract, figure out what that insect's normal habitat is like. For example, if you're looking to build a ladybug hotel to draw them to eat some aphids in your garden, you're gonna want to put that ladybug hotel in a spot where there already are aphids. Otherwise, they're not gonna necessarily be attracted to that spot. You're also going to want to put it in a shrubby sort of area as ladybugs like that good protection. If you're trying to make a bee spot though, bees like more out in the open and they won't want to be in dense vegetation that a ladybug would want to be in. So that's something to keep in mind. Another helpful tip would be to keep your insect hotel small. Don't use a huge coffee can. Use something smaller. This is going to help prevent a host of species from using the same hotel. Some species want certain environments, others don't. Some species prey on another. So even though we're using and creating a generalized insect hotel here, smaller is always better than something huge. You don't want an insect duplex. You want a nice little um, house for them. Another tip is to remember to clean it out and maintain your insect hotel. A lot of people forget that insect hotels do need maintenance just like bird boxes would. At the end of the season, closer to late fall, early winter, you're gonna want to clean out your hotel, make sure that any unhatched eggs, old food, um, excrement, casings, things like that, you're going to want to clean out and refresh parts that have started to decay. This is going to ensure that the insects keep coming back year after year and stay healthy and thrive. 